As a kid, I was never good enough at surfing to be classed as a grommet. But with a hand-me-down surfboard, my brother tried to teach me how to surf on the sun-kissed beaches of the Gold Coast in Queensland. One thing I learnt was how large, wave came, large waves came as sets, pummeled by the first, coming up for air, and then came the second and the third wave crashing through. After each came the desperate struggle, hoping for it to stop so that I could get out past the break. Perhaps life over the last few years has you resonate. With the news reports of the Omicron outbreak in southern Africa, you find yourself gasping once again for air, hoping for the set to end and to get out beyond the break, where hope is no longer stretched thin by despair. When faced with the waves in whatever form they take, we long for, we hope for change. Let me pray. Jesus, as we spend some time in your word, Holy Spirit, I invite you, we ask you to be at work in this time, wherever we are placed, whenever we engage with this message. Holy Spirit, would you stir within us a desire to grow in our understanding of you, our desire to grow in our hope that you give for now and for the future. Amen. An oppressive government dictated terms of your existence. Freedoms were curtailed. Protests were met with force as the government made sure that you knew in no uncertain terms that might was right. Religious interference went right to the top and had a trickle-down effect. An us-and-them mentality saw those uh, with treated, um, treating those who were second, uh, without as second-class citizens. Pushed to the margins... The unclean were excluded from society and worship. A hundred years or several hundred years earlier, with a nation in the depths of despair, with state against state, a prophet went against the grain as prophets often do. As the tide comes in, the prophet pushes out. As the tide goes out, the prophet brings in hope. In Isaiah chapter 9, it's as if the prophet Isaiah sees a small crack through the well, the wall of despair, light that shines um, through and bathes the prophet in warmth as he longs to reach out through space and time to embrace it. Forever changed by the experience of the encounter with the divine, Isaiah speaks words of hope to people throughout the ages in times of despair to come back to again and again. The people who have walked in darkness will see a great light. For those who live in a land of darkness, a light will shine. Rather than despairing in the present, Isaiah's words breathe fresh hope into lungs starved of air. Centuries later, John gives this account, inspired by the same divine, the triune Yahweh God, Father, Son and Spirit. In John chapter 1 verses 1 to 9, God of eternal past is fleshed out in the defining light. In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God and the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through him and nothing was created except through him. The Word gave life to everything that was created and he, his life brought light to everyone. This light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never extinguish it. God sent a man, John the Baptist, to tell about the light so that everyone might believe because of his testimony. John himself was not the light. He simply was a witness to tell others about the light. 
The one who is the true light, who gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. In a world where people are bound by the past, words spoken at them, words spoken over them, hurt and pain perpetrated against them, bruised by life, John starts to peel back, to stretch against the curtain as he points to the future. John calls forth and proclaims along with the heralding angels, the one true light, the the one that gives light to everyone was coming, is coming into your world. No one ever hopes for something they already have. Hope speaks to the future. Words of hope open us up to the promises of the future. Promises like what we find in Revelation 21 verse 3. To an audience overwhelmed with despair, the Apostle John echoes the prophetic hope of the past as he looks to the future with tears of the past when they will be replaced with all things made right. I heard a loud shout from the front throne saying, look, God's home is now among his people. He will live with them and they will be his people. God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. Today, you and I, we sit between these two realities. The reality of one hope realised and yet we wait in eager anticipation of the hope that is to come. Today, we remember the first hope fulfilled, the word becoming flesh, the light of the world coming into the world. Today, we celebrate the hope of Isaiah that it was fully realised in Jesus, God the Son becoming flesh, becoming one with us, dwelling and abiding with us. But hope is not just found in some cutesy baby that we dust off like a nativity ornament each Christmas. And then a few weeks later, we pack it away and forget about it for another year. This hope, This hope has power. Hope not in us, but hope in Jesus. Because of the realities, as John puts it, the light that shines in the darkness and the darkness can never, ever extinguish it. This is not a wishy-washy hope. That's hope with power that can overcome. That's the hope that we need, the hope that we can have in Jesus. In a world and at a time when we can try to escape the temporary realities of this world, we can be tempted to move and to try and grasp hold of hope through escapism. Those moments that are found in binge watching um, to, to block out the world around us. Bad eating to give us a quick fix of dopamine or endorphins. Uh, that kick that makes us feel good for just a fleeting moment. Or that drink that we claim we need at the end of the day. To dull the day. Escapism can be like a sugary hit. But it fails to overcome the darkness in the way that Jesus does. Instead, the hope that we find in Jesus is the only, the one and only one that takes darkness head on and overcomes it in such a way that darkness can never claw back the power that it once had. Jesus didn't go around darkness as if to to skirt around it to avoid the realities of it. Instead, the path that Jesus took to overcome darkness was to persevere through it, to overcome it through his perfect light. Jesus' victory over darkness takes him through suffering, obscurity, poverty, injustice, evil and death, all with bare and at times raw hope 
in the promise of God of resurrected life. And it's through Jesus' suffering and death and resurrection that brings us hope to, for the future. Hope in a future where he will wipe away every tear from your eyes and there will be no more death or sorrow or pain or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. Jesus paved a way for us through darkness. That's why we find that we don't have to chase after escapism. Living life well isn't fulfilled in that. Escapism will never get us through to the other side. It keeps us on this side, not the other side where we find and experience hope realised. As we were reminded earlier in our time together as Mary read from Romans chapter 5, verses 1 to 5, Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ our Lord has done for us. Because of our faith, Christ has brought us to this place of undeserved privilege where we now stand and we can confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. We rejoice too because when we run into problems and trials, we know that they will help us develop endurance. And endurance develops strength of character and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment, for we know how dearly God loves us. Jesus came to fulfil hope, to give us hope. Hope in the promise of Jesus is not in the way things will always, that this is not the way things will always be. As we hope in Jesus, we recognise that the realities of this world are not forever, that there is a future. The promise of Jesus is that he will never leave us or forsake us. It's because we can have this hope in Jesus, the promise of the present relationship that we have with Creator God. We can have this confident hope that Jesus has charted a path for us through problems and trials. These will not overcome, but through the power of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, we will grow in endurance and our character will grow and we will build a depth of hope. That because Jesus fulfilled the first hope, Isaiah's hope, that we can be confident that he will be true to his word and fulfill our hope in the future. And so when we face times of darkness and despair, we don't need to look at those times in the way that the world does. We don't have to, to live in fear overcome by darkness. We don't have to try and escape it. We don't even have to fight it in our own strength. Because of the hope realised in and through the birth of Jesus, the light of the world, this hope didn't just stop at a nativity scene, but was victorious over sin, over darkness and over death. And as we place our trust in this hope realised, when we invite Jesus in to be our God, when we accept this hope as well, it will be outworked in us and through us. As Paul, a follower of Jesus in the first century, writes to the church at Corinth in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6, he writes this, For God, who said, Let there be light in the darkness, has made this light shine in our hearts, so that we could know the glory of God that is seen in the face of God. Of Jesus Christ. We now have this light shining in our hearts, but we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. It makes it clear 
that our great power is from God, not from ourselves. We are pressed in on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but we are not driven to despair. We are hunted down, but we are never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we are not destroyed. Through suffering, our bodies continue to share in the death of Jesus, so that life of the life of Jesus may be seen in our bodies. And then further in verse 16, Paul continues. That is why we never give up. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. For our present troubles are small and won't last very long. Yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. So we don't look at the troubles we can see now. Rather, we fix our eyes on the things that cannot be seen. The things that we see now will soon be gone, but the things we cannot see will last forever. So when you look around and you see the world around you seeming to lose it all, that very first Christmas stands tall and declares all is not lost. Darkness will not win. Despair will be like the morning fog. While it might obscure, it will never overcome the light. And that death is not the end. Hope realised in that first Christmas, in the birth of Jesus, orientates our future hope. That we fix our eyes and we look forward to it. Not on the temporary, but on that which will last forever. That's the hope offered to us. That's the hope that we carry with us. And that's the hope that we can show the world for a change. Let me pray. Jesus, at a time when the world seemed to be turning on its head you came you came as a baby and you fulfilled the hopes of a nation for years for centuries people looked forward to the day that you would be born and as we lead up to this Christmas season we thank you that that hope was fulfilled but as we look to our situation, to life as we have it right now, we can feel overwhelmed. We can feel caught by surprise with feelings of despair. Help us because of that first hope realised to know the truth, the promises that will be realised again. The hope that you are coming again the hope that all things will be made new, that death has lost its sting, that despair is like a morning fog and will be gone tomorrow. Jesus, we look forward to you. We look forward to what you will do in us, through us, for us and for our communities in which you have placed us, to be carriers of of your hope to a world that at times has lost hope. Help us to carry this hope to the world for change. Amen. So how might we respond today? Well, for those in the auditorium, there's some response cards. For those at home, then you've got the ability to respond via the, the chat function as well. For those that are listening later, there's other ways that you can respond by sending us a message and we would welcome that. But there's a few questions that I'd like to leave with you. In what areas of your life do you feel darkness creeping in? Are there cracks in your life starting to show? Rather than trying to fill them with a quick fix, pray that Jesus might even shine through those cracks 
that it might bear witness to the hope that you carry within. Commit your hope to God in prayer, the hope that you have for 2022. Pray that you would be a faithful witness to this hope that is in you. So music's going to be played, and as it is, I encourage you to spend time working these through with God. God bless you.